Hey the person watching this hope this video finds you well Welcome to musical exploring music with Kalyani And 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 musical completes one complete year today For the last one year on the first Saturday of every month musical has brought to you many known unknown things about Hindustani classical music got many people to meet you and share their insights Last one year has been wonderful all because of your love and support keep loving keep sharing your blessings on musical that will keep it thriving for years to come So on the occasion of the first anniversary of musical that is the first saturday of october 2020 we have a very very special guest he has a multifaceted personality most of you must be already knowing him as a successful publisher of course he has worked as a publisher for the last 65 years those of you who have read his literature would also know him as a scholar of political science a gandhi abhyasak and an author although many of you may not be knowing that he is also a law graduate and wait yes a singer too none other than shri ramdas bhatkar music holds an unparalleled place in his life he started learning music at the age of 8 or 9 continued it for a while and then discontinued formal training or taleem for about 30 long years but the story doesn't end here he started relearning music at the age of 45 gave his first concert at 50 started teaching at 75 and turned a bandish composer at the age of 80 yes you heard it right 80 In the 86th year of his age even today he continues to pursue this art form. Let's hear him sharing his inspiring journey in the field of music. The musical journey of Shri Ramdas Bhatkar, a man of many lives. Very uh, interesting even from my own point of view that just as I was born among books so i was born in music oh that is because my mother's cousin was chidanand nagarkar the great musician oh he died very early so people today may not know much about him but he was an extraordinary uh, organizer teacher theoretician composer singer and he had a charisma of his own in fact he was with bharatiya sangeet shiksha peet while kumar ji Kumar Gandharo was with Devdar school and the two were equally stars at that time it is just that chidanand died as early as 1971 oh. so it's almost only those who are more than 70 years old will remember him actually yes so his records are available i mean and by a miracle they are in good quality oh yeah anyway so because he used to live with us till he got married I was introduced to music at a very early stage. In fact, I remember a tabla pair was bought for me when I was hardly 3 years old. Oh. I couldn't play it, but I mean it was there. So, and uh, funny marks made by me on the tabla were there for a long time. You know. <laughs> and then at about the age of 8 or 9, on the one hand I studied m- music by proxy in the sense it was really my sister just two years senior to me who used to learn first in dharwad when we had gone there in 1942 okay. and after that in devdar school of music for three years okay and we are very close she was a little senior to me but she would say no, no i am afraid to go alone you come with me So okay. the first day of first at the Devdar school I accompanied her as a 9 year old boy. Okay. And uh, when the music teacher asked can you play tabla? Mm-hmm. And being a fool of a young boy I said yes. Okay. Of course his requirement was minimal to accompany the new uh, students and just theka dena. Ha. So for I I did that for a year. when f- her second year the teacher changed i was scared that what will i do mm. but that uh, the second teacher had also seen me coming there so he also asked me to continue 
So for three years, I went there not to learn music, but just to listen to music and to accompany on tabla. So that was my first uh, experience of music actually. Okay. So this was when you were as as young as nine years. Yeah. And then how? And did and after that, uh, after three years, my sister stopped learning music, but by that time, Bharatiya Sangeet Shiksha Pit was started, hmm. and Chidanand Nagarkar became the principal there. And um, naturally, I had the urge to now learn myself. So I went to Sangeet Shiksha Peer. So on the first day when uh, Chidbapa, as I would call him, because he was my relative, um, he saw me, he says, well, the others who are going to sing with you are adults. So they will sing in C sharp, hmm. while your uh, tone is different. So you better go to the girls' class. Oh. And as it happened, my sister-in-law, I mean, my older brother had just married, and she was also interested in music. Hmm. So along with her, uh, I would go there. I was about 13 or 14 by that time. And of course, she was married and 21, 22. Hmm. And we would go there, and for about one and a half years, we learned music together with uh, Pandit S.C.R. Bhatt. You know, and because I had this uh, uh, indirect lessons in music, I was good, and I stood first in their exam and so on. Wow! But wow. that was an awkward age, and so when I was in the final year of school, hmm. I lost my voice, or rather, you know what happens when a boy enters puberty. Hmm. So. It was a little painful, and one has to nurse through that period if one is serious about music. Mm. I was serious, but naturally, SSC and examination, and so my parents said, anyway, we, that can wait. So now you give up music for a while. Mm. Now, I didn't realize that once I give up, I would give up for a long time. Though I didn't give up music, I certainly gave up learning music. Okay. Music was very much in my system. And something which, again, the present generation may not know for other reasons. Radio broadcasting was a great, great source of music. It was not only a great source for presentation, for a little money-making for the professional musicians, but more importantly for somebody like me to listen to it. And there were great artists almost throughout, I mean, every day, but particularly in their special programs like Sangeet Sabha or national program of music which was started I believe sometime in 1950 or 51 and we could we heard some of the greatest music both South Indian and North Indian mm. uh, and early in those days they were live performances of course for the listener it made no difference but they were actually broadcast as they were being sung mm. And that did make a difference as far as the artist was concerned. Later then, they started uh, using the recorded program. Yes. But still, there was that prestige associated with that. And those who do not normally, uh, they are not available for concerts like Bere Boa and Mirashi Boa and uh, Haribo Ghangrekar and many others. I heard them on the radio. And so, my introduction to music of all gharanas all ages, all types, light music also, Rasulan Bhai, Siddheshwari Devi, Gurja Devi, and even South Indian music, DK Pattamal and so on. Okay. So, it was a very rich experience and directly or indirectly, consciously or otherwise, as, as absorbing all that. Mm -hmm. But for almost 30 years, from 1949, when I stopped going to the school, the music school, to 1980, when I went back to Bhat Sahib and start, said I want to learn music, mm. I had no formal training. But even during that period, um, every day I would listen to music. And fortunately, I had some friends in college, and every day we would analyze that. Okay. So, uh, in that sense, I was very much with music. 
and uh, informally i would sing for my friends mm. uh, i didn't know too many bandishes but alap or just aao but uh, i had kept my music alive mm. and uh, it is very interesting it is when my younger son satyajit mm. he was growing up he showed some interest in listening to music I was very keen my children should at least learn music I had given up that uh, privilege but some of they were not getting interested oh. and my wife as a very shrewd mother would say please don't force them uh, let them develop on their own huh. and satyajit one day said i want to learn sitar oh wow and um, so first i took him to a good concert of vilayat khan then at that time all the schools were closed so i requested one prithviranjan day who used to teach my elder brother sitar huh. and he came for almost 6 years every sunday and satyajit developed into a reasonably good sitar player oh. and maybe by that time he was in uh, uh, ba class or something and he would ask me some questions about music and i would explain to him because as i said i had heard a great deal hmm. so one day he said baba you know so much about music you cannot ignore this part of your personality okay so it was the son uh, persuading his father rather than the father persuading his son that's how started this beautiful journey of music in ramdas ji's life the suggestion from his son actually came to reality when he started taking lessons from his guru late pandit scr bhat a maestro of agra gharana let's hear now the story behind that from ramdas ji meantime this bhat had reached uh, senior citizenship <laughs> okay. so for his 60th birthday there was a program and i went there after a long time i was meeting him and bhat and ginde presented drupad dhamar and then khyal oh. and of course in these 30 years he had also developed a great deal mm. and we are absolutely impressed i am using the word we because my brother in law co brother in law mohan wag oh. he was with me he was a great connoisseur of music though he had no previous training So he said, "Why don't we go to him and learn Dhrupad Dhamar?" Hmm. So I said, "Let's go." So we went there. But Sab said, "First, uh, he, uh, how much do you remember? I mean, thirty years back you were learning with me." Hmm. So I said, "You test." <coughs> hmm. He was such a great teacher that what he taught me thirty years back I had retained, huh. and that was basically Swaragyan. So. i was approved mohan wag had no previous training but he had a lovely voice you know very robust voice so he said okay i'll teach both of you and we started together because mohan was a novice as far as singing actual singing is concerned but i would first spend one hour teaching him swaragyan when i would listen so in a way it was good revision for me after that he would teach me for one hour in a proper way because my swargyan was there so first for several months we had yaman and so on correct and like that it progressed after one year mohan found it difficult you know because he was very very successful in life so for him struggling with finding sharja and pancham was getting difficult so he found some excuse and dropped out and everybody thought that so will i i mean at that age this is just a few days of fun mm. but i continued with but sap for 27 years wow uh, two to three times a week and i would even plan my work and holidays in such a way that those three days i could spare time for him though i was active in business and uh, when after 5 years it was my 50th birthday my sister in law and my sister in law of course had stopped singing but uh, she was greatly interested in my singing 
and so also my elder brother. Mm -hmm. So my sister-in-law told Bhatt Sahib that on this 50th birthday you must make him give a concert. Oh. So we had one concert and of course for the first concert I sang what was taught to me, not much of my own. But still it was about 65 minutes of Yaman. Wow. With alap and bada khyal and chota khyal and everything. And after my concert, of course, Bert and Gende sang, so the musical journey started at a different level. Hmm. And then gradually, um, I started singing in these private uh, concerts or in Vallabh Sangeetale, their annual program or something like that. So, that proceeded. Then, sometimes I would go abroad for my work, not for singing. And then my friends would let me sing for them. Hmm. So, I had even some concerts in America and and then in London, Nehru Centre, hmm. uh, director was somebody whom I knew. So, I wrote to him that I am coming to London and I would like to be associated with your work. And I thought he will ask me to speak either on Marathi literature or on political science, which was my subject. At, I mean, uh, by that time, I had not done my PhD, but still I was MA Political Science and so on. Mm -hmm. But surprisingly, he asked me to sing. Oh. So, I had a concert at Nehru Centre in London and at several places in the United States, which gave me confidence. Some of these long concerts, full three hours wow. and so on. So, I remember the turning point in my life that in uh, Los Angeles, uh, Ravi Bellari, a very famous uh, tabla player and in fact a man of many parts. He used to dance, he used to sing, he used to play instruments. He was an engineer by training. He had a workshop and he was an entrepreneur and everything. Very, he used to be called Leonardo of that place. He was on tabla with me. And he had seen me as a young boy, not as a, maybe as a student at Sangeet Shiksha Peet. So for him it was a discovery. So at the end of that three hour concert where I presented seven ragas quite elaborately, oh. he said, Are Ramdas, you are a professional. And that was one word I was waiting for. Oh. So the day Ravi said that, I became a little more confident. Still, I mean, it was going on and I was busy with my uh, publishing work mm -hmm. and with my other activities and so on. So, uh, this hadn't assumed any importance. As Ramdas Ji's journey as a student of music and as a performer went on, he also acted as a guru. Earlier, he never thought that he would be teaching music. But as he was approached by a renowned classical vocalist Srimati Yojana Shivanand and subsequently by Srimati Sarangi Ambekar and many others for learning music, he also started exploring music from the viewpoint of a teacher. Let's hear him sharing his experience as a guru. The next I remember, once I was travelling with Bhatt Sahib by train and there were others and when Bhatsab was a little sleepy, I asked somebody else that if I want to appear for a music exam, at what level can I appear? I thought that because of the music which I had absorbed, I could straight away appear for the fourth or the final year or whatever. Mm. Meantime, Bhatsab got up. He said, Are, what were you asking? So I told him. He said, no, no, you have done only one exam, so you can appear only for the second. Yeah. But he said, why do you want to? Hmm. I said, no, no, supposing someday I want to teach music. He said, no, teaching you can do even now. Even now you can teach at Vallabh Sangeetale. Hmm. But if you are going to appear for an exam, it is only the second. Hmm. Anyway, I didn't pursue that and I never thought that I will be asked to teach. When I was 75 years old, hmm. Yojana Shivanand, who is a very well-known, uh, even in music, and she was the head of HMV classical music section. Hmm. Okay. 
so she one day rang me up and said i want to sing i want to learn from you salak varadi a rag created by ratanjankar she said i had come for your concert at karnatak sangha along with my husband who was no more and he at that time told me look he has got such wonderful talim that you learn from him so now i want to sing that rag and i will come to you so i told her i have never taught anybody but you know music so i wanted to tell you the bandish mm. so she came about 8 or 10 times and she still calls me her guru but frankly i only taught her this one salagurari then the question didn't arise i didn't want to start a school or something like that i had many other things to do but then sarangi ambekar she came one day so the problem was they have training i mean uh, yojana also was trained by somebody from jaipur garana mm-hmm. and so was sarangi mm-hmm. and my training was from what is generally regarded as agra garana and in many ways the two approaches are very different mm-hmm. so i said anyway you know music so we'll see how it goes mm-hmm. then i started thinking that i have never taught before what will i tell her how will i start mm. and then i drew by that time my guru ji was no more oh. you know so i couldn't ask him so i said i'll remember how he used to teach me mm. because though i was trained only by him mm. i had some background when i went back to him so in a way it's a similar situation except that the training is from a different gharana mm. so i said i'll ignore that gharana part and i'll just go to what i'm going to teach and then i started analyzing for example i said there are only 12 surs including uh, uh, the vikrut swar uh, the 7 plus the five vikrut mm. but the way you present them you can make them infinite with the help of karn with the help of mean with the help of uh, whether the volume change mm. with the zawari mm. and the feeling so each sur do technically it is only that madhyam or pancham mm. the way you present it can be very different mm. and that is how you make your uh, music richer actually bhat sahib used the phrase he said a bandish is that Your job is to decorate it, क्यों श्रृंगार करना उस पर तो वो श्रृंगार कैसे करे वो आपको देखना है सो रिमेंबरिंग वॉट ही हैड सेड एंड ट्राइंग टू रैशनलाइज इट और थियोराइज बिकॉज ऑफ माई बैकग्राउंड इन अदर सब्जेक्ट्स मे बी आई ट्राई टू बी अ लिटल मोर एनालिटिकल एंड ट्राइंग टू फाइंड वर्ड्स फॉर वट ही टॉट मी बाई एक्चुअल सिंगिंग आई स्टार्ट एड टीचिंग and then taking one by one ragas we went along hmm. and then i was as i was teaching i realized two things first of all even those ragas which were not necessarily my favorite ragas but once i started teaching i had to find the beauty spots in those ragas as well as in those bandishes and for me the wording of the bandish became very important there is one school of music which believe that music hindustani music is all about sur mm. and tal and words are only uh, casual ancillary and also there are some musicians suppose there is there are two bandishes in any rag kedar one is romantic one is philosophic one is mischievous whatever they will sing all of them in the same way because they are singing kedar they are not singing that bandish mm. i somehow couldn't do that so i would go to the wording partly because of my long association with literature mm. and so that became important then i realized that the bandish was not just uh, something to hang the music on mm. not only its meaning but its swara and vyanjan also can be used Uh, akar, ikar, ukar, etc. 
and so since i had to think and not copy my guru i started finding things in music and so teaching became learning mm. and particularly because sarangi and after that i had one or two other senior people who came to me they all knew music in their own way and they had absorbed it from others it was a very fruitful uh, interchange of uh, ideas and as he went on to explore music imparting his knowledge to the disciple he also discovered his expression in the form of his own compositions yes he started composing bandishes at the age of 80 difficult to believe watch him sharing his journey and his work as a composer as an example when i teach them i said if the word parvardigar comes in you cannot treat it as any word hmm. or if there is parmeshwar or whatever i mean you have to become one with what the poet in that bandish says hmm. so paravar adigar so that your bhakti must come out of that paravar hmm. so i give a lot of attention to the wording and the swars and vyanjanas used and the pauses the secondly i noticed that the pause can play a very great role hmm. huh and for example karn i suppose the those who know the technology of music hmm. they know what a karn is hmm. but i found that even there can be karn of a pause and you can say sing something from within which is not obviously audible and yet the audience knows what you are trying to do ha so ah uh, ata in saying that first i am singing it inside it is not audible but without that it becomes harsh ah uh, is different ah uh, is different so some of these things i had absorbed from my gurus and i use plural because though my training is basically with scr but i had some guidance from pandit dinkar kaikani mm. pandit bala saheb puchwale and also from uh, pandit uh, uh, yashwant mahale okay. and not direct training but because bhat and kinde always sang together i heard them quite often mm. in a concert and gende used to give lecture demonstration so the theoretical part mm-hmm. i benefited a great deal from those lecture demonstrations so anyway i had these four or five gurus at different levels so basically for 27 years i was made by bhat saheb i must also take this opportunity to mention that when i started teaching i was amazed as to what bhat saheb had given me I had actually learned from him something like a hundred ragas, oh. including about twenty, which are swanirmit of Ratanjanika. Oh. And Bhat Sahib was such a modest man that when I first asked him to teach me the swanirmit rag, hmm. he said, "But I have not learned it from him, so how can I teach you?" Hmm. So I told him, "Look, that is true, but you have the key. You know his thinking." Mm. Huh? So who else can teach? So he taught me. So those twenty ragas, and then other conventional ragas. So over a hundred ragas I have learned from him. Mm-hmm. 
but i found that what he had taught me was something far more i mean in a way it was even more than music i mean he was a great man one of the greatest i have ever met mm. i mean in my in my profession i have met all kinds of people some of them intimately my authors for example mm. or people like jay prakash narayan and even abroad some very eminent professors and so on but i haven't seen a man like but sab so his influence me on me as a person is very great but let's restrict to music so music wise i realized that he had given me a, an approach by which i could sing ragas i had not learned from him oh you know but i knew how to unravel and how to find out hmm. so uh, as i go on i mean even now at my age of 85 i find things uh, some of buried into me which must have originated with him you know so how much i owe him is something that makes me aware of you know what a guru means earlier i used to think that it is a just customary to praise one's guru but at least in case of bhat sahib he was absolutely remarkable and of course he was reputed as a guru who can even make a rock musical <laughs> as i say so was i <laughs> but anyway so that is what it is and then i think the last phase which i would like to talk about is through teaching i had to do some imaginative work okay for example this sarangi ambekar who is my longest uh, disciple mm. she is a professional teacher so she teaches rest of the time only with me she is learning okay. and of course i think i am also learning from her but that's a different story so one day she said baba i want to teach gorakalyan hmm. no i had not learned gorakalyan so i said okay and then i opened ratanjankar's books try to learn his bandishes there are other tools but i didn't use them for example the recording of his bandishes hmm. or youtube etc but anyway i have my own way of finding out so because i was so full of that one day at night i composed one line we didn't need any great imagination i said gorakalyan means it must be having something to do with goraknath hmm. so i said अलख निरंजन गावत गोवरख अलख निरंजन दैट इज ऑल एंड आई सैंग इट टू सारंगी शी सेट बाव इट्स वेरी नाइस नो डोंट ट्राई टू जस्ट ऐड मीनिंगलेस वर्ड्स टू दिट सो दिस इज युअर अस्थाई आई सेड ओके नाउ द क्वेश्चन वॉज वॉट अबाउट अंतरा and i knew nothing about nathapantha i knew nothing about anything at all i didn't know anything about gorakalyan rag also right but anyway i tried in my own way to find out more and so i composed the antara balaknath yoga dhyan because his disciple was balaknath huh. and he used yoga to spread nathapantha across the country hmm. and he was a shaivite shiva shiva karata vitarata gyan hmm. so in four words i could bring the entire story hmm. and which really pleased me hmm? then i said but how do i conclude karata pranam that was easy i mean you know when you have such a personality you bow to him and then still it was not complete nanda nanda na kalak niranjan now so it rhymed and wonderful alak
Bhai Nanda Nandana. So my guru, his official name was S. C. R. Bhatt. Hmm. But everybody called him Nand Bhatt or Nandana or a variation of that. So okay. Nandu. So I said, I am Nanda Nandana. Uh. So that stayed as my uh, takal or my uh, pen name for my compositions. Hmm. And then once I did that, now again, this was not my own bandish in the sense what I had to say was something I had copied. Huh? Okay. So then I started making a few bandishes where I said things which I want to say. Oh. Now I won't go into that. But that is a new final phase which I started at my age of 80. Wow. And um, maybe by now I have about 20 bandishes, some of them tarana, so not much of poetry in it, but uh, the others have something very special which I want to say, and they get born in that particular raga, I don't know why, I mean, but actually even sometimes there are ragas which I don't sing normally, but some of they get, uh, I get the idea only in that uh, particular raga. Of course, music has always been a part of my life, but I never thought it will become that important. Because today, I have done a lot of work in Marathi literature. Absolutely. Though it was not my official subject at the college. My master's is in political science, mm. and I have a law degree. And my thesis is on Gandhi, Savarkar, Ambedkar. So, uh, I used to be introduced first as a publisher, then as a publisher and an author. Mm. And then publisher, author and Gandhi Abhyasak. Mm. Then they would, the person introducing would almost with a tongue in cheek said, and he also sings. Huh. Mm -hmm. I think by now, they can say that he is also a singer. Uh, you say when you were 45, you actually started relearning music. So at that point of time, how difficult was it for you to actually start afresh? No, well, frankly, Managing it would be unfair. It would be claiming an unfair advantage to say I was learning afresh. So that training was there. So I was not completely new. And as I mentioned, even in these 30 years, I used to sing as an amateur. I didn't know the bandishes and all that. But And listening is great. One Shravana Bhakti is a very important part of one's training. So I was not a complete novice. So it was not a complete novice. But to answer your question, one can learn anything, anytime. There is no question. At the same time, music is something which it is, it is a help if you have early beginning. So in fact, I would suggest that those who can must let their children get introduced to these arts, even if they are not going to pursue it as a profession or whatever. Later it will help them, whether it is, and particularly those which need some technique as music does. When we asked him about his approach towards music, he said that although he thinks out of the box, its presentation is always in a traditional or in a gharandaz way. My approach is different, but I do not deviate from the Shastra hmm. or the Talim, you know. So that is not the issue. In fact, I remember sometimes I am surprised that even 20 years back, when I wouldn't rate my music as mature as it is today, those who heard me would use this word, Gharandas. Hmm. Huh? I don't think I belong to Agra Gharana. And still, what I sing is as per the norms of that time. But this is something great. But to come back to your question, what I do is different but it is not by breaking the rules, it is by adding to it. When asked about the criticism he has received over the years and how he processed it, let's see what his response was. Criticism, there is one, one used to be there which I believe I have got over 
द फर्स्ट वन विच इवन भट्ट साहेब यूज टू टेल मी की माय वर्ड्स आर नॉट व्हेरी क्लिअर बट व्हेन आफ्टर इज डेथ आय हॅड टू प्रॅक्टिस ऑन माय ओन आय आज माय तबलजीज दॅट लुक आय एम मच ओल्डर दॅन यू बट डोंट हेजिटेट टू टेल मी इफ आय एम मिसिंग आउट द वर्ड्स सो आय मेड अ कॉन्शियस एफर्ट and try to see that now i don't think anybody will complain that my words are unclear the second thing is because i never practiced now this is very strange i have learned for 27 years but i wouldn't come home and do my riyas well i had two excuses one was i was very busy which of course i was because i was heading a business absolutely the second was that i would say well i go to him for 27 years nobody ever goes to a guru for such a long period so my talim and my riyaz is the same which is not true really riyaz has to be different but anyway so because of that there is one weakness in my singing and which is still there and that is taan because taan is a more of a mechanical effort and you need to practice a great deal and partly i couldn't do it partly i didn't do it and more important is somehow i don't like it very much okay i think that real real music comes through your alap and bol alap and the use of that shringar as bhat sahib used to tell me how you decorate the bandish and this taan is sometimes a little impersonal but it doesn't appeal to me so i have not tried very hard So I remember the last three or four years of my talim with Bhatt Sahib. He was so conscious of this weakness of mine that normally his lesson would start with Nomto Malapi, and then he would take some khyal and then go on. So last three four years, the moment I went, he started with Tan, and for four years he only practiced Tan with me. so today if my music has a little bit of taan in it it is because of his effort so i used to say jocularly that he practiced for me i never did any riyas he did the riyas for me i mean in other words he made me do this anyway i cannot uh, stop talking if i talk about what he has given me lastly we asked him what would be your advice to the next generation listen carefully these words are extremely extremely important for all of us here that there is something i would say i mean this is a little more personal that i described that i have tried to do something in writing in journalism in music in gandhi studies etc i have even written a play oh. but in all this my approach is non business including publishing even in publishing i have survived but at the same time i haven't published any book because it will sell i published a book because i wanted to publish it and then try to make a success of it sometimes i have succeeded sometimes i have not and the same is true in music I and mean, that is another thing again about about my whole life hmm. that in my life i have done what i wanted to do there are many things which i couldn't do but there is nothing which i didn't want to do and which i was forced to do don't do things which you don't like to do 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 things which you like to do and then you will find uh, ways to progress hmm. that is the first thing so music has to be in you hmm. and then you will progress that is the first part the second is while i didn't depend too much on riyas that is a must and i believe also that my long life and fairly good health is also because of music both in terms of mental peace as in terms of um, the unconscious breathing exercise that it entails so music has a special place in the lives of many people unfortunately many people neglect it but again if your ambition is more in terms of what you are able to do than in terms of what you get in terms of money then there is a much greater chance that you will succeed mm. so thank you very much for joining us for musical once again
and sharing your inspiring journey with us uh, telling us how what approach should you take towards life in general and also as regards music thank you very much once again thank you very much and actually these three or four topics i mentioned i can go on talking infinitely but i also know when to stop and most of the time when i am asked to sing i stop before people want me to stop <laughs> i am sure people would not want you to stop ye aaye ra ye da